Parker. All right. It's can everyone mute, please? Right. All right, you guys mute out. Carol, if you don't mind, I think you have the ability to mute people. Um, I'll have you help me with that. And okay, so. Um, Dustin, you're muted. <laughs> you mute me out? Jeez. I get it. I see where I stand here. Um, so, hey, guys, Dustin here. If we haven't met already, um, been with Prove It for a bit. I've been with Prove It some, almost for seven years. In two days, it'll be seven years, I bought my first pack. So um, we're going to be doing this weekly huddles um, for a while. I, 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 as you know me, I tend not to do things the same day forever. I tend to always change things up. Um, I think it's my personality. But um this is our second week of doing this time, and we have a special guest on tonight that uh, are on today that I'm super excited about, um, and I can't wait to introduce you to her. Uh, not only is she inspiring me, but she's inspiring people literally all over the world, and um, and we're going to talk about attraction today and how do we attract better. Um, but before we do that, I want to just touch uh, briefly on on uh, this call. So this call is not to replace anybody else's team calls. Um, this is called just a, an added bonus that you get a chance to listen into it and hopefully grow from, hear from different people, different voices, um, and maybe different perspectives of the same information. Um, the ultimate goal is for us to improve and, and become the best we can become and whatever that may look like for every one of us in, you know, in, in, in our own journey in this. Uh, next week, I'm thinking about doing a colors training. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit at the end, what that might look like. Uh, and I have to execute it, which is another another step to this. But this week we're gonna we're gonna talk about ACE attraction, but focus primarily uh, or on ACE, but focus primarily on attraction. And but before we start, I want to do this, and this is kind of be like a ritual I want to do. And Kate Higdon, they won't let her in. She 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 just can't get in. Um, but. I want, to, I want to do this ritual um, every week. And if I forget, I want somebody to stop me in the middle of whatever I'm saying and, and do this. But in the chat below, um, and this is important. If you're driving, don't do this. Be safe. Just think about it. But what was one win that you had this week or, or the last seven days? What's a win that you had? And I'm going to say mine verbally, um, but I want you to type one in the chat. And this could be a win in the business. You got a customer. You got a promoter. This could be you got a customer to buy food. For me, my big win this week was I took yesterday off from exercise. I am a very competitive person. I'm doing this 28 day challenge and I push myself to, the, I always push, push, push. That's my personality type. Cameron Moss and I were talking about this just the other day. And I'm trying to work on my inner game. I'm trying to look at what do I want my life to become? And I know that if I, if I, if I exercise every day and my body's telling me to stop, but my, my mind's telling me to keep pushing through that I'm gonna eventually break down so yesterday I was supposed to go to the gym. I had it all blocked out in my calendar block. And I said, I looked at my, my, my aura rings telling me to slow down. My body's telling me to slow down. And I decided not to work out. Now that was not easy. I literally, it was, I obsessed about it for about six hours. I should just still go. I, you know, I'm, I'm, am I quitting? Am I giving in? Am I giving up? But the reality was the best thing that could I could have done was actually rested for a few hours. Get, I went to bed early last night. I woke up. I feel way better today. I feel way more motivated to go to the gym. I'm probably going to get a way better workout. And ultimately, that was a good thing for me. So that was my win for this week was I actually took more time and I paused. I rested. Now, this is my personality, something I need to do. But in the chat, I want everybody to go on there and just put down one, one of their win. And I want everybody that can go in and just read these for a second. I want you just to read these. I got a new, prom new promoter coming. Awesome. I was out of town. Three new customers watching me from Ace. This is good. New promoter, new promoter. Um, stepped out of my comfort zone. Awesome. Um, what did that look like? I'm just curious. But in there, uh, stay consistent on my health journey, Samantha said. So I want you to remember, though, when we have a win, a win should matter a lot. That's why the colors training, I think, is going to be important. It's not just about, remember, Prove It is about pursuing the best version of yourself. It's about us getting better. Cameron Moss and I were talking the other day. It's like, we, we don't really have a lot of space in our life to work harder. And, and Mitch said the other day on, on Monday's huddle call, he's like, not last week, I think, or no, this week, he's like, anytime that you feel like you're, you're hitting a wall, he goes, he always asks the question, how much effort are you putting into your inner game? So sometimes a win is reflecting back and saying, and just being grateful for something that you are taking for granted. 
our wins can come in a lot of ways. So I want you guys to, to keep in mind that it's not just about a sheer number of building a business. It's not just sheer how many people I recruit. A lot of you are here for different reasons. And I want you to honor the reason you're here for. So with that, before I introduce Amanda, which I'm coming in just a second, in the chat, oh, let's, let's do this. I'll do this a different time. Um, I'm actually not going to do this today. But I want you to start thinking about over the next week or two, I want you to start thinking about um, about why you really joined Prove It. What, it, what, did, what in Prove It do you need the most? Do you need a community? Do you need health? Do you need um, money? Um, I also then I want you to think, what do you want the most? I'm going to say this again. What do you need the most? And what do you want the most? Some people legitimately just don't have great people in their life that are uplifting and positive, if that makes sense. Or they're there and you're in such a negative mindset that all you see is negativity in them, even though they actually maybe are uplifting and positive. A little, a little hint in that one. But what do you need the most? I think some people come in and they need community and they feel like they need money. And sometimes they're getting incongruencies to their results or their expectations aren't being met, right? Some people need to lose weight for the product, but the reality is, is they, they, what they really need is to get healthy. If they get healthy, they'll lose the weight. And if they focus on sometimes the wrong thing, what happens is you feel like you're failing even though you're having great success. Um, so I want everybody just to put that in their brain because we're going to talk about this more and more as we're going along the way. And Mitch and I were talking yesterday. We think this is really important because um, more people, there's nobody I'll ever meet that basically says I have all the money I want. Almost everybody would want more of it. Some people, it is the most important thing in the moment of their life. Right now, it's the most important thing for maybe a, until they solve that problem, they pay that bill, right? Kate Higdon, she needed to get her house back. That at the moment was the most important. She was not healthy either. So once that she got that finalized, now she's been on a health journey for five years, right? Getting her health more under control and understanding that better. So keep in mind that that can change and shift from time to time. So I want everybody to think about that. Um, and then the last question I have before I introduce this uh, amazing young lady is who would love to, to maybe dive into the five love languages? Would anybody like that? Now, I, I don't know if this is going to happen or not. Um, I have, I know a guy, Dana, I know a guy that actually is pretty good at this concept. And maybe he could do a little Zoom for us on the five love languages. So if you guys would like that, um, I got I to gotta, I gotta see if he would do it. I mean, this is a big favor. Um, but I think it'd be really cool uh, to do that. I'm actually going through that right now. My This year for me, my biggest goal, my number one goal, I'm being honest, y'all, I'm here to build a business. I have stupid financial goals. Um, they're awesome. They're big, they're bold, they're brash. And I just, I'm excited because it's all coming I, and, I, and I already know it. My number one goal this year is to improve a relationship with my wife, bar none. Because at the end of the day, when I'm 65, and I'm an old or 85 and 95 and 105. I want to be the old couple on the dance floor dancing and, and, and having fun with a smile on my face. So I say this, and that's just something I want to bring there to this. And by me speaking it out loud, it makes me more ingrained to, to bring it to you guys, if you guys would like that. So, all right, I'm going to introduce somebody to you. She's going to introduce herself just a little bit too, but we have this concept called ACE, attract, connect, and roll. When people think about prove it, how do I build the business? It is this. Now, there's a lot of nuances along building Prove It. You know, there's bonuses and there's BV to the packs and all this other things. But without ACE, attract, connect, and roll, none of those other things will ever really matter. So the young lady I want to introduce you has been um, on the top of my leaderboard. When I look at my team leaderboard constantly, literally every month, I think for the last seven, eight, nine months. Um, I don't know exactly how far back. And she's bringing in customers and promoters like it's going out of style. And... It's been fun watching her go through this journey and watching her grow as becoming a leader, but I want to take you guys back. And if you guys would like to enroll more people into Prove It, let me, let me rephrase that. If you'd like to attract more people into your life that are, that are looking for better, and if you'd like to have more customers and build a bigger foundation of a business, I want you to put a one in the chat. And I'm going to introduce Amanda. I'm going to do an interview with her. So she's not just going to rip and talk. I'm going to interview her because I think this is going to be really important for a lot of you guys to hear. So she is somebody that shows up. 
She's uh, from what I when since I've gotten to really know her, she's been super dedicated to this journey. Um, and she's been working with somebody that I respect at the highest level, Cameron Moss. She's been working very close with her. And I'm watching her step into her leadership role that she's now, she's a badass and she's stepping into her greatness. And it's cool to watch that unfold. But also the one thing I appreciate about the most about Amanda is that she is really good at keeping it simple by not confusing the simplicity of what we do. And I want to bring her on. I'm going to have her do her 20 second story about herself. Um, because that's all she goes, this is me in 20 seconds, bang. But I want you to listen to these next 20 seconds because what she's going to say is probably the, the number one reason she's having the greatest success in this right now. Okay. Amanda, say hi to everybody. <laughs> hey, hey, I love how you threw the 20 seconds out there because literally that's all it is. My name's Amanda. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am a survivor of domestic violence, sexual assault, and drug addiction. I am a mom to three teenagers, and plus my husband is a teenager himself, so my house is super crazy. <laughs> oh, I love it. Awesome. Now, I have to ask, is your husband really a teenager or just acts like a teenager? Because it does matter to me. Is he 19? I know he's 42, but he, okay, does okay. Act, he does not even act 19. Let's put it at like 16. So he's right there with my kids. <laughs> so he's a good man is what I'm hearing. He's a good man. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this question, Amanda. How long, um, really quick, and, and this is the reason why I set up the Zoom this way. And if you're just jumping on now, go back and watch the recording, watch the first five, 10 minutes of this, because it matters. Um. How many customers did you sign up last month and how many promoters? Oh gosh, I knew to look at my numbers before I got on here with you. And that was definitely on my bucket list. Last month, I think I was somewhere at 120 customers and about seven or eight promoters. Awesome, congratulations for that. Now, I am i don't wanna say that for people to get like, what the hell am I doing wrong? You know, I suck at this. Y'all, I've never come close. I don't think, honestly, I don't think I've ever had more, maybe the first month I maybe signed up more than 20 people. I don't think I've ever signed up more than 20 people ever in one month, ever. Now I hit multiplier every month, um, but I don't send up. I, I, I'm just being honest with you guys. Like, so when I hear 120, whatever, I'm just like, Phew. but I want to say this because there's something that's going to follow up on this. And I want you to remember her story. Um, Jen, man, I know you jumped on. Um, and you just heard the story right there at the beginning, which is important. Um, I also want you to remember something she's going to say in a, in, a, in a second here. Amanda, how long have you been drinking ketones and promoting ketones? So I've actually been drinking and sharing ketones for three years. But basically for the first year and a half, I just did whatever. Um, one day, finally, I woke up and I just decided that I'm going to do this. Like I am worthy of this. I am capable of all things. Like I am going to do this. So it's really only been, even though I've been drinking and sharing them for three years, it's only been the last year and a half that I've really, you know, decided to take this into a business and stay consistent with it and just continue to show up. Awesome. So let me ask you a question back three years ago when you started, what did you, what did it look like when you were sharing what did, you, what did that look like? If you could paint a picture for me, um, how often did you talk to people? Did, is it, was it trying to do it on social media? What, did you, what were you trying to do? So three years ago, it was messy. Even till this day, it was still messy. Um, and the more that I showed up and the more that, you know, I put no, But like, what did, what did messy look like? It anyway. was messy. Did you post, did you, was it, were you trying to do it on social media? Were you trying to talk to your. Yeah, no, I, I started with my warm market um, and I started locally here in town. I live in a small little cow town called Okeechobee, Florida. I've been to uh, Okeechobee. We, <laughs> we probably have like maybe five or six red lights. And I started with my warm market and I started with the police department um, coming from addiction and all that stuff. I wanted them to be able to see me for the person that I am today. So I, I hit our, our sheriff's department local here in town and I had like cop cars coming in and out of my driveway. It looked like I was just this drug dealer, but I wanted to be able to get the ketones into their hands. So that's where I started. Once I was able to take over the sheriff's department and getting all law enforcement to be able to drink ketones, I just moved on to the next. Okay. So did you do anything online at that time? Uh, I did. It was a hit or miss. Um, I would just like throw some random posts together and 
I didn't have any intentions behind my post. And if they come to me, they came to me. If they didn't, they did it. Okay, cool. So it was just, you took it casually, let's, let's say. I did. Without a, without a specific plan. Now, I want to be clear here. You are a former drug addict. Yes. And you decided to go to the police that knew you. <laughs> did they know you because you're a drug addict? Did they know you for other reasons? I'm just curious. No, I don't they actually know pretty you. much knew me because I lived in and out of jail. Um, that was my, basically my second address. Um, because I was in and out of jail. So a lot of them knew me from that, but a lot of them just knew me because Okeechobee's just so small that you know everybody. Does anybody else live in a small town? I'm just telling you, small towns are great for this if you are ready for it. Small towns are great for this if you are ready for it. I want you to write down two, a couple of things that she said. First thing she said, she decided. When she started, she started. I'm trying this thing. I decided I'm going to do it and stay consistent. Okay, that that. That word decide is, is often the, the most um, powerful word that I think people will ever have in the, in the transitions of their life. There was a day Bonnie decided she was going to do this. She was trying ketones and then she decided she's going to do core four. Derek decided when he was going to do it. Everything changed when that decide happens. Now we say the word decide. There's something that's a shift inside of you when you say that word decide. You might get off this thing. I'm going to decide to build this business, but if if it doesn't shift with your energy, then it, it, unfortunately you'll have to decide again. So the other thing I want you to, to note is that she didn't hide from her past. She didn't cover up who she really was. Now that's a benefit in a small town. She couldn't. Big enough towns, you can you can make yourself look somebody other than you. And I have this. We call that an imposter syndrome. You're basically talking about somebody other than yourself. And what happens is that you, you lose relatability. So I want you to write these words down. Give up credibility for relatability and you can build an empire. If you give up credibility, credibility means that I look perfect all the time. Credibility means that I'm like, uh, you guys, I got caught into this, you know, like, my life isn't perfect, but man, you meet me, everybody's like, man, you have the best life. I'm like, oh shit. They don't see my struggles. They don't see my obstacles along the way. So therefore I'm not relatable. And that non-relatability makes it tough. People don't feel comfortable talking to people that are not that relatable to them. Now you might say to yourself, I am relatable. You may be the most relatable person I know, but you have this perception out in the world that people can't feel comfortable coming to you. This has been my journey. This is a big, this is, this is me. So I love that about Amanda. Last thing I want you to, to, to write down and Amanda, tell your 20 second story one more time. I am a survivor of domestic violence, sexual assault, and drug addiction. I'm a mom to three teenagers. Plus my husband is a teenager himself. Awesome. So I'm going to have you add to this when you tell your story, especially in around the prove it community, add the fact that, yeah, you know what? I dabbled with prove it for three years ago for almost a year and a half. And then I decided that I was going to go change my life. I decided I was going to make this bigger than I, I decided that I was going to be great at something or great at this. Add that to your story. That's just a little side note. You will, a lot will change in, in your life. A lot will change with that adding to your story. Okay. But the one thing I want you guys to know is I can't come off the off it right now. When she told her story, she didn't live in the past. She recognized her past. She did it with good emotion. She didn't live there. She didn't dive into the domestic dispute. She didn't, she didn't pull her audience deep into that. Now, if I got into a one-on-one -on -one, one -on conversation, if she was sitting with the mom, one-on-one -on -one conversation that's been through some stuff, she might get a little deeper with that person. She might sit down and have an emotional conversation about where that person's at as she's coming forward. But that's another thing I wanted to get. If you've had a drug addiction challenge, anybody had a challenge in their life here? Is anybody, you guys, I'm setting you all up for attraction, just so you know. This is important. This is this is the important part, not what you post. I promise you, that all comes along the way. If you've had an obstacle in your life, and sometimes we can stay there, we can play that victim role a long time. We stay in, we talk more about the problem that we've had in the past instead of about where we want to go. We use that as a way to relate. You know, yeah, I used to be an addict. 
you were, I have a good friend of mine on here. She, she's had some challenges with, with addiction in the past, but she'd rather hide it from everybody. And it was funny because the whole time I'm trying, and we're, she, her cat videos are what take off. They're the one that, that's what explodes. But she's like, I don't even like cats. Like she's, so it's, there's an incongruence to her social media in her. And what's funny is when she told me this, I'm like, this is your best gift. Show people who you were and look at who you've become. Show them the journey along the way. So I say this because this is a time right now, I want you to write down what are two or three obstacles that you've had. And listen, you don't have to have Carrie, if Carrie's on here, I don't know if she is. Um, she does, she's like, Dustin, my life is awesome. She goes, I have a great, great life. Good. Tell you that too. You know, life has been really blessed to me. I didn't realize I was looking for more until this fell on my lap. It's okay to say that side too, but let people know where you were at and where you're going. What's that journey look like? And it matters more than people can realize. And the more you care about what you think, the more that your hair has to be perfect on social media, the more that you have to look, if you're, if you say to yourself, I look like shit today, I'm not going to do a live. There's a secret there. I'm not telling you to look like a, crappy thing on live and, and go and, and always look like a piece of crap when you're putting it on live together. I'm not saying don't put yourself together. What I'm saying is that you care more about what everybody's going to think of you than what your message is going to be. Does that make sense? So when you say that to yourself, I, 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 I was it earlier, Jeff, did you have your shirt off earlier? I did, sir. Okay. Okay. Listen, Jeff, how much do you weigh? 339 pounds. How many people right now would just take their shirt off being 339 pounds and, do, and get on a Zoom with a bunch of random strangers? He doesn't care about what you think. Does that make sense? He, and you meet this guy. He cares about you. He's awesome. He's got the big heart and he's pursuing his, his best version. My point to that is, is that he's willing to share more about some things going on and be more relatable because he's willing to be himself. That was something, Jeff. I have to practice. I, I'm like, I'm a fitness guy and I don't always look fit. You know, I've had some surgeries. I got some stuff going on and I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to take my shirt off. If I look a little chubby that people are going to judge me. So you guys, this is not just you. It's, it's, this is me too. So I want to be clear there that this all matters. Okay. And those are some good metrics for you all. So Jeff, I appreciate you keeping that shirt off and I'm okay with just putting it back on. That's cool. Right. My point is, is that- Thanks, that, that, that is, that is, that to me is an indicator that he's willing to be relatable and vulnerable. And ultimately he will have more success and grow in this business because people can go, well, dang, if that guy's willing to do this, I can do this versus, you know what? She always looks so damn pretty online. I could never be her. She looks so good. Now at the same time, if Amanda goes and does a live every day and she looks like she literally just woke up. And she's got a cigarette hanging out of her mouth and she looks half hung over. At the same time, you're projecting a different image of who you maybe you're trying to attract. Or how about this one? You ever get the person online that's crying and telling their sob story all the time? They're attracting. I'm not against doing that. It's just you're also going to be attracting that type of person. So there's an awareness here. But these are good little awarenesses for you to recognize where are you truly at. And I want you to write down. You don't have to put this in the chat. I want you to write down how much do you, one out of 10, how much do you care about how you look before you get on and do a picture or a video? 10 being a lot, one being a little, okay? Now, I want you to be honest with yourself. And I'm not telling you to look like, a, like, like you just got out of bed every day you do a video, but I do want you to be aware that as that number gets lower, as that number gets lower to below a five, let's say, Hopefully, do you think Michael Rutherford ever cares what he looks like, what people think of how he looks? Never. Who's the number one income earner in company? Him. There's a, there's a, there's, there, there's a, there's a secret in there. And I want you to know if that's what you need to work on, it factor. That's, that's a bigger obstacle. And I'm still in all Amanda's thunder. So let's get to the good stuff. There's a video that she had me shoot. Uh, or I don't know if her or Alex, let's get to the good stuff. I got a lot of views from that one. Anyway. Amanda. Okay. So three years in a year and a half, you didn't, you just dabbled and prove it. Last year and a half, you went after it. What's happened. The first, when you decided, did you choose a platform to go after? Did you decide, how did you decide that you're going to share the product? 
I did. So we actually did a TikTok boot camp with um, a couple of the team members and Sam was like so good at it. Well, our the first video that she gave us was the hardest video ever. I think I wanted to like bang my head against the wall probably about six different times, but I did it. I did it. And after I did that one hard video, I just took it and I ran with it and I stayed consistent in doing the little boot camp that we had to, that we were all doing together. So once I was able to, you know, niche down on TikTok, I started building my Facebook and then out of nowhere, I don't even know what happened. My Facebook turned into this creator portal and I just started I started doing it messy. So I started taking my videos from TikTok without removing the watermark and just posting it, posting it onto my Facebook reels to be able to uh, put it, or put my content on two different platforms. So the more that I started to learn Facebook and the more that I sat back and I watched what was working, I started to just, you know, implement and do it better and just do it better and just do it better. But at first, no, it was messy as heck. All right. Let me ask this question. When you first start, decided to build this as a business, mm -hmm. did you get 120 customers right away? No, absolutely not. If you want to tell... <laughs> How many, like, did you get, did you, did you just, did it happen fast? Like when you decided, did it happen crazy fast? Like, give me some numbers if you, if you no, it was kinda, we kind of, I kind of eased into it. Um, I started off with probably about 18 to 25 customers and that's where I held it for a couple of months. But once I just decided to really truly do it and decide is my word for the month. So that's why I keep saying it a lot because I want my brain to remember it. But once I really just decided to do it, it just took off. I went from 20 customers to 50 customers. And then I was like, well, if I can get a customer a day, I can challenge myself to get two customers a day. So I run better off challenges personally. That's how I know my brain works. So I started challenging myself to two customers a day. Once I got two customers a day, I was like, well, hot dang, I could do three customers a day. So it just kept growing. How about this guys? Um, I decided to get a customer a month and then I can get one, I can get two or a customer a week. Right. So I, I want you to be aware that the numbers shouldn't be, a, there's, there's some, there's a recipe in here. And the recipe is, is that she's setting marks moving forward, right? Setting marks moving forward. Now she's shifting towards bringing out promoters, which we're not going to dive into as much on uh, today. Um, but it's really about this concept of attraction. Now, some of you are probably thinking to yourself like, okay, well, what does she say? <laughs> What's going on? I'm going to get to that in a second. But I'm going to be clear that that is that's important, but it's not the most important part of what's been said so far. Relatability, transparency. OK, now you also decided that you're going to commit. Now, you're using social media primarily now as your as your attraction tool. Um, are you doing it solely on TikTok, solely on Facebook? Is it across the board? What, where are most of your attraction coming from? Where does most of your effort go to? It's across the board. So I, I love was it always that way or is it, has it been no. more is it No, it what, started what on TikTok okay. um, and then it moved from TikTok to Facebook. So I really just truly use the same content that I'm posting on TikTok. I now remove the watermark and post it to my Facebook, but a lot of my attraction comes from Facebook. Hmm. How many people have already jumped off the Facebook bandwagon? Facebook is where I'm actually getting the most attraction now too. Y'all, no matter what you look at, I'm not against TikTok. I'm not against Instagram. I actually love Instagram the best personally, the interaction of it all, how it works for my, for my, my style. Um, but Facebook still wins. It still has the most people on it, just from a sheer numbers perspective. But it doesn't mean you don't get in the other games. I, wanted, I want you to listen to something here. She focused on one thing. So how many of you are jumping from nine platforms to nine platforms? raise of hands give me some jazz hands how many people are on all the platforms and and be honest are you do you feel like you're becoming a pro at any one of them or do you feel like you're kind of half-assing them i want you to be honest so amanda as you got good at tiktok did it feel easier to get good at facebook absolutely cool now i did a, i watched a video the other day um and i want to know your honest opinion of this and on TikTok, it said, uh, TikTok knows how much time you spend on the platform. It knows what you're doing. It's, if you don't commit the time to it, if you don't commit the time to it, they're not going to show your content as much. Did you see that video? I don't think you maybe saw that video. 
Um, so he's like, you need to be doing lives for like, you need two hours of really good information. I like, you need to spend time on the platform basically. And he was saying, he was suggesting two hours. Do you believe that to be true that you need to, if you're going to be good at that platform that you need to give to the platforms, um, you need, you need to play the game of the platform. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. And I think that that's absolutely, in my opinion, a crock. Um, I literally probably give myself five minutes every single morning to go through the TikTok newsfeed and not get la lost in the rabbit hole just to find a trending sound. So mm -hmm. I give myself that five minutes to find the trending sound, to make my TikTok, to go ahead and know what I'm going to create for that day. And I don't go back on TikTok. Awesome. So let me ask this question. Um, you do play the trick, the TikTok game though, the, you played to the rules of TikTok. Yes. Okay. With the trending sounds, I played to the rule. Okay. So this is important y'all. So if you're picking a social media platform, um, if you're going to make this a business, this is why I'm saying all these things is that the content is actually really simple. There's some nuances that people are missing, which is the transparency, the relatability, but also they're not playing some of the games that the social media, if I used to be like, well, I don't care. I'm going to do it my way because that's what I want to do. And the, the right people will find me. Well, unfortunately, Facebook didn't want to show my videos to anybody because I wasn't playing by any of their rules. So on TikTok, let's use this example. Um, and this is similar to Instagram and probably similar to Facebook. Um, they have reels or these short videos are really becoming popular for now. That's going to change at some point. And they have these things called trending song, songs or sending sounds. Well, Amanda is playing by the rules of TikTok and she's giving TikTok what it's asking us to give. So is that accurate to say? That is definitely accurate to say. So and another thing that I truly do is every day that I wake up, I have to realign my energy. Like, because let's face it, people don't buy the product. They're buying you. They're buying the energy that you bring. So I don't care if I have to jump on a fake imaginary trampoline like I did before I got on this Zoom call, like to boost my energy up, but you have to bring the energy. I had to bring the energy. So I realign that every single morning. Awesome. I want you to write that down. Now that's a, that's a difference between somebody that's, that's, that's trying to do this as a business and deciding to do this as a business that she changed her energy. Um, Y'all, this is something that I got to learn from Brian. I've been very blessed that it's been built into me. I think since I was a little kid, maybe from athletics or something. But like when you get ready to go into something, like I'm getting ready to go on a wrestling match, you get that energy up and you go perform. You are performing. Now, does it mean that you're, you might not, you might be doing a relatability thing that doesn't want you to be yelling and screaming, but you bring your physiological energy up. Tony Robbins talks a lot about that. Okay, so. Let's get to the good stuff. What, when you're attracting people, what's your messages that you may be sending out to people? What, what, what does that look like? I guess, let me first ask you, who are you attracting? Who's your, who's your tribe? Who's your audience? Like who's your target audience? Not, don't be too general. I want you to be kind of specific here, but I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to circle back around because there's going to be some generalness to this. Okay, so to be honest, I had an awareness one event in Kentucky while talking to Dustin on attracting my avatar. And at that time, I was thinking like, I'm in recovery. I want everybody that's in recovery to join my team. Well, Dustin said something that stung just a little bit. I meant like it stung. And truth is, I don't want to be somebody's sponsor. Like, I don't want to have to be their sponsor. So I started sharing my story and attracting people that had that was just like-minded like myself by sharing my story I was able to build relationships without having to be their sponsor so so you when you when you see your avatar can you describe your avatar to me please I can happy goofy go getter self starters yes people trainable teachable coachable leadable like fearless awesome all right guys so Remember, she uses in her story to attract her, ultimately. Now, let me ask this question. You've attracted those types of people. I see one here sitting right here, Miss Elliot. Um, you're attracting these people, right? Are you attracting people other than you still? I am. 
Mm. Because people are relating to my story, whether they've gone through it or they haven't gone through it. They probably have a friend or a family member or a sister or something like that, that makes them be able to relate to my story. And it helps me to build that relationship with them. Awesome. Corey Calvin and I did a really cool, uh, he's done a few trainings for me. He's a, he's a former PepsiCo uh, marketing guru. This guy's brilliant when it comes to marketing. And he goes, Gatorade, they have a target. They put a circle, like a, like a target. And he goes, Gatorade markets to the same story, the same person every time. He goes, but ironically, most of their sales go for people that are not that person. So when you target your market, the more you niche down to where you want to be and who you're looking for, the more that you do that, you're still going to attract a lot of people. But what happens is you're finding people that want something from that. Like they, Gatorade focuses on athletes, right? They focus on athletes, athletes, athletes. Although most people that drink Gatorade are not athletes. They, but they'd like to be athletic. They'd like to work out more. They'd like to become more fit. And that's what's exciting about you honing this down. Because now it's, is it easier to talk to you or is it harder to talk to you? It's easier to talk to me. Yes. When you get on a call with a new person that's like you, how, how is that call? Is it easier or is it, is it, is it weird? Because you're like, uh, you're an 80 year old man that is got a knee replacement. Just kind of don't know where to go from here. Or is no, it? It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> okay. it's easier. All right. So I'm going to do a little, I'm going to, we're going to come back. I, just, I got more questions for her. Give up relatability or give up credibility for relatability. Where's that? Where, where is, who are you? And what are you really, really willing to share to people, to the world? Do it with a good energy and decide. Once you decide, you can do it. Bring up your energy. Bring up your physiology when you do these reels, posts, comments. And even on a post, I'm just going to tell you, I don't know if you guys believe in energy and law of attraction and the world and the universe. If it all comes together, I promise you. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in the, in the whole thing. Uh, even when you're doing your post, change your physiology, change your energy. I promise you'll write differently. You'll write the post differently in some way. It'll, it'll come across differently. And then focus on your tribe. If you don't know who that you're writing to, that's where we got to get back to. How do you figure that out? Um, I'll give you a little tip that I recommend is write down. Write, first off, write down some struggles you've been through. And know that, that most people have been through those struggles. Doesn't mean you have to live there. and doesn't mean that has to define you. But it does create relatability, especially if you're looking for people that are looking for better. If, you're, if, if you are perfect, then you're only looking for perfect people. Well, why would perfect people need to join us? Does that make sense? We're looking for somebody that maybe has something that they're trying to, they're trying to, they're trying to accomplish. They're looking for more, looking for better. So typically people that are looking for better have something that's uncomfortable right now with them, right? And so I want you to keep that in mind, but I want you to, if you're trying to figure out like kind of who am I, write down what, what are the five or six things that you love to do? What are three or four things that make you really happy? Write those down. And typically that's kind of who you are. That's, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. And if you say that you're a keto expert and you've been doing keto for six months and you want to help people with depression and keto, keto, that's probably not quite where you're at yet. And that's going to be a journey. It's probably something other than that. Just so you know. Okay, Amanda, give me an idea of what some posts would look like or some 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 reels that might look like that that are demonstrating you. And if you have a phone or something you want to show, you can. Uh, yeah, I do. So first off, I want to touch on something that you just said, and we're doing this course by Amanda Francis and like, it's a big meditation thing. Like the energy is so good. The energy is so clean. And they were talking about yesterday. Like if you don't show, if you don't show up, how's somebody going to find you? Like if you're not showing up on social media, on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Pinterest, whatever platform it is that you're choosing to do, how is somebody going to find you? And like, I was like, that's so good because when I wasn't sharing my story, guess what? Nobody found me. 
And it doesn't have to be about drug addiction, sexual assault, or domestic violence. Like everybody has to, has a story. You just have to find what that story is about you. So that was like really, really good. And that was like a big opening for me. So with every post that I make, I have an intention behind it. So every time I put post a post together, I have language that goes with it. So let's say for the post that I did yesterday, I'm kicking off a challenge May 25th. Who wants to shed some fat together? I personally do a challenge every single month with a group of people, and I'm constantly adding new people into this group. All they have to do is start off with a challenge kit and a box of electrolytes, and we shed fat together. Okay. Awesome. You've got some so, so good. So good. So, so good. Okay. Let me ask you a question. When you started your group, did you have a thousand people in it? No, I still don't have a thousand people in it. Uh, how, how many people were in the group when you started? Um, my first month that I ran it, I think I probably had 15. 15 people. Awesome. Okay. And it's grown each month. It's grown each month. Cool. But you started. I started it. And the great thing about it is, is now my customers are building these relationships together. So I'm just the glue that's kind of holding and introducing them all together. And they're building these relationships and helping each other and dropping recipes and everything else. So you created a subcategory, a sub community, yeah. a sub community with, with improve it. Right. And I like to say, this is that prove it creates the community. We create the glue to get them to come to be part of the bigger community. And that's what Amanda's doing. But I, I want to be clear is that she decided, and she said this, I do a challenge every month, which I do a challenge every month myself. I think that's, that's consistency. You might do a challenge every month and you might have one or two people show up. But if you stay consistent and work on some of these skills, just like Amanda's done, that will turn into 50, 75, 100, 150, 200 people in your group. That's a personal. This isn't even, and then your customers will start to learn how to share without even trying. So your post are your personality, you get your energy up, you might talk about um, your challenge. What's another idea? What's another attraction post that you might do that isn't around sales, just something simple? Um, I've actually started an entire board that has like post idea with languages. So um, for instance, like if I'm doing a sales post who's been wanting to try my magic fat loss juice and wants it cheaper than my price our pricing raise those hands so i have language that goes with that post um i also have an opportunity folder i have let me back up i'm going to back you up for a second now would this work if you didn't have attraction in other ways no because i can't just say, do you want to shed fat together? And they don't even know who I am as a person. So what's that look like? Because to be honest here, it, it's funny because it's it's like, I think that the most important thing of attraction is for people to get to know you. They fall in love with you. They're not falling in love with ketones or prove it, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're basically, they're relating to you. And therefore, when you ask to join them, that's when the, that's because that's why the sales work so well or the, the, the post that's going to attract. If you're really good, if you're not good at attracting, you're going to probably not going to be really good at selling, if that makes any sense, or sharing our product. So mm -hmm. give me a couple ideas of what a post might look like outside of anything around sharing ketones. Oh, that's a good one. I actually just did one yesterday. And basically it talks about 2036 days ago, um, my life was ripped away from me. I was in a car accident with my daughter because I relapsed with the needle before. Um, and my daughter was removed from me by DCF when in place with her dad that she had barely known. She had probably met four or five times in her entire life. So basically just introducing them to my rock bottom and letting them know what I've been through. Awesome. Now that was one, if you could just follow Amanda and I encourage people to find people that have either are having success or are, are like you. Um, Amanda sends me a lot of her trends and I'm like, what are trends I could do? <laughs> they don't. It's funny because like we're different, right? So I'm always like, I feel awkward with some of these trends. I got to find a way that I can do them to still play the game by TikTok, right? So this, this is great because she told you a personal story. And I want to be honest, was that pretty, is that pretty hardcore? transparent you guys you you you, you gotta be honest it's like that was pretty did that do well for you amanda did people did people respond well to that 
They did. I think that like got 3.4K likes on it and probably 341 comments. And also just showing up from gratitude, like showing up with gratitude to let people know what I'm thankful for and thanking them for supporting me along this journey, because really I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for them. Right. That's so true. That's true. Every comment on social media, every like is, is they're supporting your growth. And sometimes I get, I had a video that went stupid crazy and it was mostly negative comments. And every time I responded back to, I mean, and it was like, I'm talking like a full-time job just to reply back to the comments. I was giving gratitude for every negative comment because the reality is it, it was actually serving my greater purpose, which is to how do I impact more lives? Even though it wasn't necessarily all positive, which was hard at first. Um, so Without that, without those posts, so she showed you the transparency of her journey. Does anybody have a, a story within them that they maybe haven't shared and that could relate to people? Doesn't mean you live there. Now, Amanda, are all your, your posts about yourself, about your, you know, your addiction, about relapses, or do you do other things that are, that are more fun personality type things? My husband and I made a TikTok and we put aluminum foil on our teeth. So I took a picture of it. That's because I'm goofy. So I want people to know the recovery side of me, the person that struggled in addiction, the, the hot mess mom that I truly, really am, and the goofy side that my husband and I have together. Awesome. Awesome. I think one of my biggest things, Dustin, if I could say anything is to, I had to realize that I'm not who I used to be. I'm better. And there's so many people out there that are better as well and just need help finding that. That's awesome. Right. Y'all write that down. I'm not who I used to be. If you're on the zoom with us right now, you're not who you used to be. You're better. Be, first off, pr be proud of that. Celebrate that. Give yourself a little, Kate, give yourself a little pat in the back. Uh, Kate and I talk about celebration a lot and, and know that you're, you're just a chapter ahead of somebody else in their story. And you're sharing, you're relating to them with your previous chapter, showing them where you're going. Okay. You're a chapter ahead of somebody else. You got to share, but you, if they're not going to follow you in your chapter. If they don't know where you started or they don't have any kind of connection to that. Okay. Relating to the audience, relating to people. Um, if you want to get really good at speaking and presenting, that is very important in speaking. I've done it to you guys like nine times already today. So, but I've been trained to do this. Amanda is learning it through this platform and she's learning it in a big way. And you, everybody on here can learn the same things. Okay. Last question. Uh, it's not the last question. Second to last question. When somebody gets started with Prove It and you get them started on the, uh, uh, once you attract them, you do a sales video and remember how to sell ketones is least of, you have to do that. But if that's what you think you need to get good at to have success and prove it, you are going to struggle. What you really need to get good at is the relatability, sharing your journey, sharing who you are, attracting people to you that are looking for better, that the, the, the sale of the product will be very simple at that point. And it'll be successful at that point. Um, I promise you this. I promise you this. Now, when somebody says, hey, I want to learn more about this magic mama juice, I want to join your challenge, what options do you give them? How do you, how do you connect them to something in the, in the community? Uh, I want to tell you on the last part that you're just talking about, too, about the attraction is be vulnerable. Like, don't be scared to be vulnerable. Like, allow others to get to know you. Allow them to know the good times, the bad times, and the great times. Like, do not be scared to be vulnerable with your situation, like step out of that, that comfort zone and step into the greatness because that's where it's truly at. So something that I personally do is I don't give them a bunch of different options to choose from. I tell them that I recommend that they start with a challenge kit and a box of electrolytes and I can throw a cart together for them. Awesome. So you keep it really simple. Super simple. Less options. Cool. So I want to, I want to reiterate this. One of the things that we got to keep in mind, um, and I'm not going to, I can go for hours on this one and I'm not going to, and I'm not going to bring it up camera and I promise I'll keep it quiet. Um, when you're getting people started, less is more. Hey, we have a new flavor. If they're brand new, no, we don't have a new flavor. If they're brand new, they get the new flavor, which is in the challenge kit. <laughs> That's their new flavor. You give them one option, two at the, at the, at the most. And that's, 
the good, better, best bundle. Pick one or two of those options that you go with. Funny thing is, is she might sell the be- the good bundle and she just says, hey, I got a box of uh, ketones and electrolytes. I sell primarily all best bundles. I, I, I don't give them the other options. I only talk about the one. If they downsell, they go down. That's just my approach. That's her approach. You get to choose your audience on that. But I, you couldn't pay me to tell any new person about keto kick, about keto uh, uh, keto up, MCT 143. It doesn't even come out of my mouth. You couldn't pay me to talk about it. It's, it's a challenge. It's whatever challenge that they're going to be doing. It's the core four challenge. This is what we're going to do. That, that's your rhythm. And, and why do you think that's, A, Amanda, does that work for you? <laughs> it does work for me. So I, I recommend that they start off with a challenge can the box of electrolytes, but every single day on my story, guess what I'm mixing up liquid ketones. So yeah. all my people that started off with the challenge can the box of electrolytes, they're like, Amanda, what is this that you're drinking? Oh, it's the same thing that you're drinking, but it's just liquid in instant ketosis. So it brings me into introducing other products to them once they've already started their kit. Awesome. Now, you th- the, the, the big thing is, is keep in mind as a company, we're constantly going to innovate and bring in new stuff. And that's important. And the reason why that's so important is important because we want, we have people have been in for a while. They're looking for advancements and adjustments, but the new person, y'all, they just need to get started. And the uh, confused mind does nothing. So always focus on what your rhythm is. And you might have a rhythm. She has one challenge pack and a, and a modiplex. Uh, Samantha might just sell the better bundle. She might go, okay, it's two challenge packs and a, and a, and a, um, um, and a modiplex, right? So get in that rhythm because what will happen is that also replicates really well. So it's easier for a customer to go, well, this is what I did instead of, well, I don't know. I got to the cart and there was this and this and this and this. So I bought a couple extra of this. So now the customer is confusing the next person. And if you want to go fast, then keep it simple. Okay, pick one thing. And they, you, they can always buy the other stuff later, but keep it simple. Keep one thing. So, um, all right. Last question, Amanda, what's next? Um, what, 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 what do you need to do to take your business um, and go to uh, another level? Um, I would definitely have to say by doing what I'm doing right now, Um, And whenever I put in the comments earlier, stepping out of my comfort zone, well, this is out of my comfort zone. So, but I'm here, I showed up to it, I'm speaking to you. Um, So just showing up like I'm doing right now and doing more Facebook lives, because I know personally that Facebook lives are going to take me to that next level on where I need to go. I just text my assistant. I'm like, my lives are freaking crushing it. Like absolutely crushing it. So let's give everybody an action step today. What's one thing, one thing they can do today to get them uncomfortable and to step into their greatness? What's one, what do you think we could give them as an action step? I would definitely say get vulnerable, share your story. Okay. Should we have them do it as a live? Yeah, absolutely. All right, here's your challenge, everybody. You go live and just be vulnerable. Tell them your story. Now, I want to reiterate this. You don't have to live in your past but tell them something. You know what? I struggled here. I was on an airplane coming home and a few of my promoters, um, I got vulnerable with them for whatever reason. And two of them broke down crying, grown ass men. They broke down crying. They're like, dude, man, I appreciate you so much more now after after hearing that. I know coach Tony hopped on and I spent some time with him in Europe and he told me a little bit of his story. uh, Some of the things that, you know, you would, most people would never hear about. And my, I already respected the guy for days. Like, I love the guy, the brother. He's just an amazing individual. But when he, he- when he said that, I saw parts of me and him. And I, and I realized why I liked him so much. There's so much of us that were similar. And, but I didn't know that until he told me some of those things that maybe he wouldn't share with other people. So um, that's your challenge for tonight. Um, do, everybody, do, everybody, do me a huge favor. Give Amanda some love in the chat. Um, I, I have pushed her a little bit over the last few months. Uh, and I know she's up for a challenge. And this may be one of her bigger challenges that she's done in a while. Um, and so I appreciate you. Hopefully you got some nuggets on this, but the, the lesson I hope you take away from this is that if you want to be great at attraction, it's not writing the perfect post. Um, that will come. It's finding who you want to talk to and how you can be more relatable and vulnerable or relatable to your audience and attracting people to you. 
Um, last little tip is pick a platform, get good at it. You can cross platforms. I'm okay with that. I'm actually encouraged it. Um, but if you're, if you're half-assing five platforms, you're going to get half ass results. If you maximize and get great at one, you're going to get great results. And then you can grow the other ones because now you have the recipes or more of the recipe to have success. So uh, a good friend of me told me this is that uh, the goal is to be more of you more often to more people. And so let's be vulnerable today. Let's do a Facebook live, tag me in it if you don't mind. Um, and, uh, and I appreciate you, Amanda, uh, so much. You did an awesome job. This is one of my favorite zooms I've ever done. So I appreciate you and y'all have an unbelievable day. Cheers. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Tonight, 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 we are doing a special maximizing ketone call. So tonight at, I don't know what time it is, 8 15 or something, but check the pulse. Um, I've sent it out to everybody. This is for new people, new customers, people that are just getting started to get immersed a little bit into our community and learn how to take ketones. So invite them into that call. And then don't forget of our action Zooms, um, our action Zoom schedules. Don't forget about that. Today, we don't have an action Zoom going on. This went long. So I'm going to do is I'm going to pulse out this replay. And what I'm going to have you do is if you got stuck somewhere and got value in it, watch this for 30 minutes and then go do your Zoom. Your live. Your action Zoom for today is to go do that live. So uh, with that said and done, appreciate you all. Thanks, Amanda.